Hello, hello, everybody. Hope y'all are doing good. Y'all, if we have not had a chance to meet yet, my name is Trevor. A um, little bit about me. I have a really big family, just like a, a lot of you guys do. I have five siblings. And, and any one of you know, if you have siblings, that sometimes um, life is, is just not fair. And growing up, my siblings would always, always break the rules, say mean things. And, and when I was little, um, just, just candid, I was a tattletale. Big time tattletale. I wanted justice for my siblings and for their injustices against me. I wanted to, I wanted them to pay the penalty um, what they did. And, and sometimes, sometimes tattling would pay off and I would get a little, a little boost. But sometimes there seemed to be, you know, there's just no visible consequences for the way my siblings acted uh, when I thought that they should clearly be punished. But the truth is, um, life is kind of like that. People do things that we know are wrong. They hurt one another, they break the law, they discriminate, they make people feel less than, um, and less than valuable than you know, they really, really are. And sometimes, sometimes things get visible consequences, but sometimes they seem to like skate on free. We call these things injustices. Injustice, an injustice is the opposite thing of justice, right? Justice is right, it's fair, it's pure, it's, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's just. Injustice, well, it's the exact opposite. It's not right, it's not fair, and it's not just. So right now, go ahead and just take a second and say, um, say out loud to your small group leader the first injustice that pops into your head. Oh, I heard some of you guys say some some big things. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I can't hear anything you guys are saying. But some of you, some of your minds went to, to these big like world issues, these big injustices like human trafficking, global poverty, world hunger. Um, but maybe, maybe some of you thought of a, a, a time that you, you know, you saw animals of, of an, or, or pic, you know, pictures of animals kept in cages, treated poorly, and and you wonder like, okay, who the heck would do that? That is just, that's, that's hugely wrong. Some of you thought of something that's a little bit more local feels, that feels unfair. And it's, you know, something that's right around the corner. And then, and then there's a group of you guys who thought of the way that you have experienced an injustice personally. And you know, you know, that, that deep pain all too deeply. Um, and it's just too real. And the truth is, is, is injustice hurts. And if it is, if is you who has experienced an injustice, let me just stop and, and say this. Um, I'm sorry, really. What you're walking through, if you're experiencing um, something like this, it is not okay. And uh, if you only hear one thing, one thing I say tonight, let it be that Crosspoint students, at Crosspoint students, we do not ignore things that hurt our family. You are part of our family. You are part of this family. And, and our hope is to create a safe place where you can not only talk about your experiences, but also feel completely known, truly loved, and cared for by the other people in your small group, including your small group leader. And, uh, and I just want you to know that uh, there's a safe place. Whether big or small, something comes to mind in all of us when we think of injustice. And because of social media nowadays, I think that you guys experience and see injustice way more than any other generation before you. So the question is not, does, does injustice exist? We all feel it, we all see it. The question is, why doesn't someone do something about it? So this is what we have been discussing throughout the series. Injustice makes us um, naturally question things. And I think, I think a big question that injustice brings to mind is, if God is so good, so big, so powerful, why the heck does he allow for all the injustice to take place in the world? We feel kind of nervous because we think, you know, we're, that's a weird question to ask. We're not supposed to question God. Um, you don't want to question God. Maybe you're, 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 you've experienced the injustice yourself and, um, and you're like, well, how can God be real with all of this going on? Or maybe you think like God is just completely silent um, or just really not present at all. But here's what you need to know. These questions are so good to ask because first of all, first of all, you just need to go, God, God is not going to get offended because we're asking him, hey, like, where are you at? 
He wants us to find truth. He really does. He wants us to dive in and find what is true in the world. So today we're going to discuss this question and discuss where God is in the midst of injustice. So to answer this question, I actually want to answer the question of why does God allow injustice with a question? So my question is, why does injustice exist at all? Why do we know what is just versus unjust? How do we, how do we know that there's a thing that's different between right and wrong? And we call this knowledge of what is right and wrong moral law. See, if no moral law existed, the difference between right and wrong could, uh, could get reduced to completely a matter of just shifting opinions. So if I believe this, then that's right and wrong. If you believe this, then this is right and wrong, right? So the moral law tells us that people have meaning, life is not meaningless, and people should not exercise harm against one another because there are things that are just and there are things that are unjust. So here's the thing. Because we can think morally, because we can recognize that there are right things and there are wrong things, there are just and unjust things, that means that something or someone had to write that moral law. So this reality points to the fact that there must be a moral law giver. So there has to be someone who decides what is just and what is unjust. And we believe that that moral lawgiver is God. And um, we're going to talk about that today. And we're going to talk about what God says about injustice. Um, y'all, I need you to know, I love the Bible. Like, I, I really, really love the Bible. And I love that the Bible is the word of God. I love that it is his truth. It's his story. Um, the Bible brings clarity to these questions, to our questions. And God tells us exactly who he is. And I love, I love that he doesn't hide. He's not hiding behind the shadows of, actually, I'm this, but... Um, and I love that. See, the Bible also tells us about injustice. And the very first injustice takes place in Genesis, and it's between Adam and Eve and God. And uh, they basically, Adam and Eve deliberately disobeyed God, bringing sin into the world, bringing disobedience into the world, bringing injustice into the world. And before um, injustice is against another person, it is first against God. And we know God you know, we, we kind of see God as, as this, this being who's perfectly loving. But the truth is, God is also perfectly just. And there is no injustice in God. So anything that is injustice, anything that is um, not of God is injustice. So, so that means that anything that is injustice exists against God. So back to our question. Why does God allow injustice? And here's, here's what the Bible teaches. He um, it teaches that he will end all, all injustice eventually. But we have to realize that if God ends all the injustice, he has to end all of it, not just, not just bits and pieces. Injustice is rooted in evil, right? So for God to end injustice, he has to end all of the evil. And we want him to, to end the big things. We want him to end the, the things like human trafficking and racism and sexism and all the, you know, all the isms. But but what, what, about, what about evil thoughts? What about when, when we disobey our parents and, and uh, we say a mean comment to a friend out of, you know, out of frustration? Because those things are injustices as well, just on a smaller scale, right? See, the Bible teaches um, in Romans 3.23, it says, For all have sinned, every single one of us, me and you, for all have sinned and fallen, uh, fallen short of the glory of God. And then again, in Romans 6, 23, it says, it says that the wages of sin is death. So these injustices, what they deserve is death, right? So we all deserve punishment for these injustices, not just the really big injustices, but all of them. But thank God, the story doesn't end there. See, because of God's great love for us, he allows injustice to coexist with us in hope that we find him. And see, the, the, the next verse in Romans 3, so right after Romans 3, 23, verse 24, it says, but all are justified freely by his grace through redemption that came by Christ Jesus. And, and continuing, the back half of Romans 6, 23, it says, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So yes, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of Christ is eternal life. We don't, have to, we don't have to pay for that death here on earth because of this gift that Jesus gave us. 
So before we can really move forward in understanding why these, these big injustices exist, we have to first see ourselves rightly. We are all fallen. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. We have all made mistakes. We have all committed injustice. So why doesn't God end those injustices? Because he loves us and he doesn't want to end us. So he sent his son, Jesus, as a gift. Um, so we don't have to pay for those consequences of injustice that, um, that we have already committed. But instead, he gives us the gift so we can live in unity with Jesus and with other people in a world full of injustices around us. But in the world full of those injustices, we get to follow Jesus. Guys, this, this is the good news. And uh, we get to live with Jesus free from sin and free from injustice if we accept him into our lives and we, we repent and turn from those sins and say, Jesus is, Jesus is Lord. And I love this. Matthew wrote about the good news in the book of Matthew. And so Matthew was one of, one of Jesus' disciples and he was, he was an eyewitness of the life of Jesus. So he got to share all these bits and pieces of life with Jesus, which is awesome. And he shares with us things that help us understand this picture a little bit better. So in Matthew 9, verse 35, we're going to pick up. So if you have your Bible, go ahead and open it up. And, uh, and it, starts, it starts with this. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. So that's verse 35. So during, during his ministry on earth, Jesus spent a lot of time traveling around to tell people about God, tell people about this good news we we're just talking about. And in doing that, Jesus talked about and did a lot of different things that God cared about. He showed us what God cared about. Things like people being rescued from captivity, the hunger being fed, the poor being served, and the children um, being cared for. In other words, Jesus talked a lot about injustice. And he fought for injustice, but Jesus didn't stop there. He also did a lot of different things to help those who were in need. Um, he healed and helped people who were sick and suffering um, all the time, all the time. Everywhere he went, um, Jesus had something to say and do about injustice. Scripture continues in verse 36. He says, Matthew says, when he saw the crowds, when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. Guys, this is so important. Jesus didn't see the people around him and move on. He did things to help them, but, but didn't just act because... because he had to. He acted with this deep compassion for them because he really, really cared. And, um, and that, that compassion motivated him to act in a way to help others. Man, and, and guys, that's, that's what he's, he's asking us to do too. That's what he wants us to do. He wants us to respond and act, not just because we should, but because we care, because we really love people. See, the harvest is plentiful. Plentiful, which means, uh, means that there are, there's a lot of people out there that don't know the truth about Jesus that we just talked about, that they, they're experiencing injustice without any hope of getting out of it because they don't see the hope that we have. And, but I know, but, I, but you and I, like we know about Jesus. We know about the gift that he's offered. We don't have to be like the rest of the world. We can live like Jesus. And through us, God can do something about injustice. And that is, that's an incredible, incredible thing. So guys, the question is, is, what's God doing about injustice? God, God is doing something about injustice. And he does something about injustice using people. He is using you, he's using me to do something about injustice wherever we're at. Y'all, in this, in this passage, God is, is opening our eyes to injustice. He's, he's given us compassion to care, um, to care about, and he's, he's calling us to act um, and respond to it. Um, so, so the big question is, is, you know, how do we take all of that and how do we put it in action? It starts, it starts just doing what Jesus did. We just love our neighbors. Loving people well means that we not only care about them, but, um, but we really take the time to get to know their hearts, their struggles, their desires. We see, we see um, the most injustice take place in someone's life 
when we love them the most. The people who are closest to us, that's when we see injustice take place um, in someone's life. And, and when injustices happen against people we love, we have an opportunity to stand by their side and stand up um, for what is right. Uh, but we can't do that if we don't know the person. We can't do that if we don't love love the people around us. Um, also, also loving our neighbor like, like Jesus did also means just showing compassion um, and love for those who you disagree with, even those who hurt you. Now, listen, that does not mean that we just roll over and allow injustices to take place in our life. What it looks like in a lot of our lives, in a lot of your life, like um, as a student especially, it means that if you see an injustice take place in your own life or in a friend of your life, you speak up. Tell a parent, tell a small group leader, have a conversation with the teacher. Um, we don't let things just roll over. Um, that's, not, that's, not, that's not what the gospel teaches, but we do have hope on the other side of, of experiencing injustice. However, it is so important to remember that we are not responsible for our neighbor's actions. You know what my mom used to say after I would get upset with my siblings uh, when, they didn't, uh, when they didn't get in trouble, when I, when I thought they definitely should, like we talked about in the beginning? My mom would look at me and she'd say, hey, Trevor, you are only responsible for you. And what she meant by this is she was saying, she's saying, you cannot control what other people do. You can only control your own actions. I am only responsible for the way that I act the things that I say, the decisions I choose, the, the way I treat people, and, and uh, the kind of people I spend my time with. Um, people around us are always going to make mistakes, are always going to hurt us, and, um, and, and honestly will always be committing in, injustices because this, this evil is in the world. But we bring hope to that. So here's the truth. We cannot expect the world to act like Jesus um, because they don't know Jesus. A person who doesn't know Jesus is incapable of living like Jesus. That, that just makes sense because they don't know Jesus. But we get to share the love of Jesus, um, leading people around us in our little circles a little bit closer to him and, and a little bit towards freedom from injustice every single day, just the way that we live. So guys, with that in mind, um, I think the truth is, is Jesus puts things on our hearts passions in our hearts, things that, that really bother us. So really like what injustice in the world do you care a lot about? Which one moves you to want to, to, you get hyped up, you're like, oh, this makes me mad. What do you want to see in the world around you? What makes you want to, you know, just do something uh, to make it right? Is it, is it racism, untreated illness, um, unequal treatment of, of women, animal cruelty? Is it the student, you know, who's bullied? Does that just get you fired up? Is it the, you know, the homeless population in your area? Uh, I mean, even, you know, the middle schooler, one of your classmates who's, whose family just can't afford Christmas presents, does that just like get you? The truth is these things, these things God lays on our hearts for a reason. Um, and, and those things that God, like, that God gives us, that gives us an opportunity to step in. That gives an opportunity to fight for them in prayer. That takes, that gives us an opportunity to fight for something deeper than, than just this, you know, this, this injustice going on physically, but it's something spiritual as well. You know, as, as Christians, we don't fight against, we don't fight against flesh and blood. We fight against um, the, the, the spiritual realm of principalities that are evil and, and dark. Um, and, and we fight those things with prayer and with asking God to show up in, in our lives. Um, it's an opportunity for us to stand up and do the right thing also for our people. Not, not out of, of pride or anger, but out of compassion for the people who can't stand up for themselves. Guys, as y'all begin discussing what we just talked about in your small group, begin to share what injustices have broken your heart and talk about, talk about how God can use you personally to share the love and the good news of Jesus with the people who, who, are, who are in your group, people who are in your life who are just lost without a shepherd.